Hello Comrades, so today we're gonna learn how to make zigzag game and we're gonna learn it in a prototype way so it's not a finished game it's just a way for you to learn how to think about this game what you should add there and more or less like a starting point from which you can actually make a complete game alright so that was our game uh, let's see what we have we have a light and we have a base. Base is size 5x5, five five. it's basically a cube and it has collider in it. We have a sphere which is our character and uh, scale is uh, 0.4 and I moved it on top of the base. It has a rigid body and locked constraints on rotation so it doesn't rotate. I don't want it to rotate because I attached a camera to it and if this rotates camera will also rotate and we don't want it to happen and it has the character movement script which i will explain later this is a custom script that i created for this game uh, i also created a different material so the character itself is green and not white the camera is just a child of a sphere so it uh, follows it everywhere and it has zigzag builder script which will actually build our zigzag. Right, and we have a tile prefab, which is just a box. So this is a tile that we actually spawn and it creates a path for us, our zigzag. Let's look at the script. All right, so we have a list of tiles and in total we'll have 30 of them. So we need this list to uh, keep track of the tiles that we have and to move them from the beginning to the end of this list. Uh, in order to reuse them more or less so we don't create them all uh, and over again and we use the ones that we already created then we have a reference to a prefab and we use it to create new ones in the beginning then we have a reference to our character and we need it to calculate the distance later uh, that's how we'll figure out when we have to basically move the tile from the first position to the last position and we have a next direction which is a thing that we will use uh, to figure out if our character goes uh, right or forward because in zigzag game there are only two directions uh, right or forward or left or forward basically uh, these two directions make 90 degree angle together all right so first we go with initialization of the list we set that it's new list of game objects and we create a first tile and i already calculated that position will be 302 because our base is five by five so three two this will be totally perfect and all right we created our first tile then we create 29 more tiles why i se selected 30 there is no specific reason uh, that's just the amount that definitely is a bit more than fits on the screen and that's just enough for me so let's see what our add new tile method does because we uh, want to create this uh, call this method in order to create new tiles so first thing that it does is creating a new random color and we do that by using random range uh, random range allows you to get a random number in some range so from in range from uh, 0 to 1 it will give us random value for red for green and for blue and we will create new color out of it and save it into new color variable then next direction we also use random range, but we use it not for floats, but for ints in this case. And what's important here to know that our two will be exclusive. So zero inclusive and inclusive, I mean, and uh, two will be exclusive, which means that the real uh, values that can be actually uh, created by this random range is zero and one it can't create two because it's everything below two and if it's equal to one then we go right if it's not equal to one which means it's equal to zero we go forward 
then if we have less than 30 tiles, basically it's this case. So when we just have uh, created our game and started it, it goes to start and it has to create new tiles. This is our case. What I do, I just add a newly instantiated prefab, tile prefab, and the position will be the previous tile in this list plus the direction. And direction is generated randomly here. So that's how we create it, and then we assign to the now latest element in the list. We get the mesh renderer and we assign a new color that we just generated to it. So now I want to show you how we check when we actually have to add a new tile during the game. We get the distance between the character and the middle tile in the list. So we have 30 tiles. It will be uh, 15 style, more or less. Yeah, and this is how we do it. We get the tile of tile count minus one divided by two. And if the distance is less than two, then we call add new tile. And in this case, add new tile will do this. It will take the first tile in the list, which will be the last one. So for example, if we have like created a huge zigzag here, this will be the first one and this will be the last one. So we take the first one and assign it a new position, which is position of the last one plus the direction. Then we change the color of the first one and we move it in the list. So what we do, we basically add it to the end. And once we add it to the end, so tile zero is our first one and we do tiles add, which will add another reference at the end of the list. So now we have this tile uh, zero, so first tile as the first and as the last at the same time. What we have to do, we have to remove it as the first one. So we remove it at index zero. So we added it at index last and removed it at index zero. So now it's basically moving in circular movement around the list. All right, that's all we actually need to do our zigzag. We just have to check the distance and move the tiles. For character movement, that was pretty simple. It's not like perfect, perfect, but again, we're just doing a prototype and you're just getting an idea of how this game works in general. So I have reference to my rigid body and I actually just realized that I don't need it. So let's remove it, right? I don't need it. Yes. We don't have reference to rigid body. So we have our movement vector. By default, it's right. And we have our speed that we can basically modify from the editor. When we either tap on touch screen or click left mouse button, we check which direction we are going in now and more or less change it to the opposite one. So we have only right and forward. If we are going right, we change it to forward. If we are going forward, we are changing it to right. And then we basically adjust the position of our character by our movement vector, which is forward or right, multiplied by speed and multiplied by time delta time. Time delta time is the time from the previous frame to the next one, to the current one, I mean. And since not all the frames are created equal and update is called all, uh, every frame, we just want to kind of uh, make it smooth so it doesn't jump all the time because the time uh, between frames can differ like three times, for example. And in first frame, it moves by one. In the second frame, it moves by three. And in the third one, it moves by two. We don't want this different movement in different frames. So in order to avoid it, we multiply our values by time delta time. That way, every frame, it will give an exact proportion that we need. And 
we multiply by speed just to get the exact speed that we want from our character. That's literally all you need for this game. So what we can do here, we can play it again. So I click and the direction changes. It's from right to forward, but right is left here because of how I set up the scene. And if we go and miss, then our thing falls. We can see that there are just 30 tiles. And if we look in the scene, okay, we can't look like this because we have the distance being important. But let's look here. Let's see. If you look at the tiles, how they're getting created in the scene view, you can see that the last tile gets moved to the forward position, like where the next tile should be of the zigzag. All right, so that was the whole tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more. And if this one was too difficult for you, try my basic courses for sharp programming or basic game creation courses. All right, see you in the next one.